So, this album's cover is deceiving. Not in a negative way, it's more or less showing the message of the album. It shows high-res on the one half of the album, and a lion's head on the other half. Now, looking at that, you would immediately see, if you're an avid hip-hop listener, you would be under the impression that it's supposed to be lyrically heavy, running back to back to back with high Res's foot on these artists' neck so that they don't breathe. He's trying to stay at the top of the game. That's, that's the, the feeling that I got when I first saw the cover. But it's not that at all. This album is all about building humility in the people that the stories are based off of, some of them being based off of high Res's life. Now, the reason why there's a lion on it is because it builds the hunger inside of you to want for more, to want to be better, to want to do greater things. And this album is meant to inspire. Now, on the way home today, I was listening to the album and I felt something. And I didn't want to say it at first, but I honestly don't care. This is what everybody should have been. Not to say that Logic's album didn't deliver the same kind of oomph, but this is a more multifaceted look at what it's like at different walks of life. It's not just focusing on one sole person here and there, and then one other person for one specific song. It's different people every track. It talks about broken love life. It's talking about... Dealing with anxiety and depression, although Logic does do that. It's just a more personal thing. At least it felt more personal when Hi Rez was talking about it. It's talking about wanting to be famous in the rap game and dealing with all the devils that are going on in it. It's just, it's multifaceted. It tells a story on each track. Now, a little bit about Hi Rez. A lot of people have heard of him. But a lot of people don't know about him. So let me introduce you to him. He gained a lot of fame based off of his McDonald's rap and his Pokemon rap. Now, where he's from? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. In the last year, he's brought out an album, his own clothing line, some of which being nostalgic to the Rugrats. He's a 90s baby. I love that. He brought out a hot sauce and a comic. This guy is not stopping and he is completely independent. He's even caught the eye of strange music on multiple occasions. So it's nice to see that someone's favorite record label, like my own, is wanting to get someone like him. They know the fire that he has inside of him. They know the talent he possesses. But I want to try and let the people know. So, this album is the best way to be introduced to high res now, a lot of people would listen to Missing Pieces, his previous effort that was brought out last year, and think, well, why wouldn't you recommend this? Let me start off by explaining the album to you. Humble But Hungry starts off with the title track. And the title track features one of the greatest hooks that I've heard this year. It is very basic, but the voice behind it, Regine Batista, is so angelic. It is something so awe-inspiring. I haven't heard anything like it within the past year. I can't even remember the last hook that had me caught so hard. Actually, it was a hook off of Big Crit's album, but that's neither here nor there. It has been a long time since I've heard a hook to catch me off guard like that. It's basically talking about High Res and his dealings with anxiety and depression. He was hooked on the meds, and he was trying his hardest to get off of them, and he ended up getting off of them. So kudos to you for weaning yourself and rehabbing yourself and becoming sober, for lack of better words. Now, the song I want to cover after this is called Boy With No Home, which is basically talking about loneliness and knowing that there's someone in my family that left his own side of the family because he felt like he didn't fit in with them. And he himself was lonely for a long time, and he was betrayed by many people, his parents, other people that he had been, you know, putting his trust in. And then he felt like he was at his ends, and one day everything just changed with a pure stroke of luck. That is the kind of story that I connected to when I heard this track. 
Song after this is called Same Hell, which talks about the evils in the rap game and also the morality of it all. You know, you could become involved with some of the habits that other, uh, uh, other artists do and become addicted to lean, coke, whatever. Whatever the vice is of these other artists, you could fall into that too, but you could also just be yourself. Being yourself is always easier instead of trying to fit in with the crowd, isn't it? Or at least that's what we were told. It should be that easy. The song after this is called No Regrets. This is one of my favorite songs on the album. The hook is done by Hi Rez, and Rez, I have to commend you for the just raw nature of your singing and the verses. It is amazing. I highly recommend everybody just listen to the album purely for this track. It's just looking at the brighter side of things. No matter what you deal with in your life, no matter how bad things may be right now, if you're growing up in a home that's seeing constant struggle with finances and you might even be out on your ass somewhere because you got kicked out of your apartment, you got evicted, something of that sort. This is something that you can at least grow to understand that within time, everything that your parents have done for you, if you are in a situation where your parents actually care about you as parents should, you'll grow, you'll grow to respect and appreciate all the things that they've done for you. And I love this song S simply for that reason. Song after this is called Flexing on the Gram, which is basically just high res slamming all these assholes on Instagram and how they're lying left and right. It's like, stop, stop lying. Just stop lying. It's, it's not that, it's not that hard. It's literally the rap version of why the fuck you lying. So <laughs> I think it's great. Now, song after this is bouncing off the walls. This is Rez lyrically running the gamut on everyone. He is just, it's line after line. This man is kicking ass. He has no shame. He is running through it. And I bet if someone were to challenge him and remix this song, they probably couldn't do it as good as he does. Now, is it complex? Is it conscious? No. It's something that is just pure lyricism. It's amazing. That's, that's all that it is. Sometimes the simplest things are the greatest things. Now, hi Rez dedicated a song to the Parkland victims on this album. His cousin and a couple friends of his were ones that were killed by the shooter. And he doesn't take one side. He does take his own side. But he talks about purely the morality of checking someone's mental health and making sure that they're okay. You know, it's not about the politics. He even says it himself in the song. He says, I don't want, I don't care about the politics. I just want to talk about what this is. And he knows that the politicians don't care. We all know the politicians don't care. They just, they don't seem to understand the impact of checking someone's mental health before they purchase a handgun. And parents don't understand keeping their guns safely locked. And if they see that their child is dealing with issues, lock them bitches away or sell them. Consignment. Get rid of them. Anything. They're... That's just, that's just how it is, you know? Anyway, the last song I want to cover is called Forever Love. And this is the importance of talking about the things that are inside of you. The story is basically two young lovers that meet in high school. They're having a fantastic relationship. And then one day things just go completely south and they argue a little bit more than they ever have. And the young man that is involved in this relationship takes things the wrong way and he decides to hang himself. During the song, it talks about him talking to himself about the things that are going on in his head, and he doesn't speak up about it. So, you've heard everybody talk about, speak up if you're starting to feel like shit. Speak up if you're starting to feel depressed. It's not that easy for everybody. But, if you understand that someone else has gone through this, or you hear something that's similar 
to how you're feeling. Maybe it can aid you to start to start revealing that. It's very difficult for somebody to come out of that pit. It's very, very difficult for somebody to even speak on themselves being in that pit. So speak up. Take your time, though. Hopefully you speak up before it's too late. I think that's all I want to say on this album. This is one of the most intricate albums of this year. It's probably hi Res's best music yet. Missing Pieces is definitely a very lyrically sound album, but this one has more story compounds to it and it makes it more complete. I highly recommend everybody listen to it. The album will be in the description and so will Missing Pieces. I highly recommend you guys listen to them both. And I think that's all. Thank you everybody for tuning in. This is episode 45 of Claws, I think. Yeah, 45. <laughs> um, tune in next week when I finally, <laughs> finally get to review the Suicide Boys record, I Wanna Die in New Orleans. I've been looking forward to this record for the better part of a year, and I cannot wait to share how I feel about it. I'll see you guys next week. Enjoy your weekend. Stay selfish. Peace.